Hello, everybody, and welcome to our live stream this evening. My name is Austin. I am the Central Committee member of the Ohio Green Party, and I am the liaison officer for the Young Greens of Ohio, as well as a member of the International Committee of the Green Party of the United States and an international observer of the Green Party of Korea. I thank you so much for tuning in today, and I am joined by Marco. Uh, hi, my name is Marco. I am the co-chair for the Young Greens of Ohio. Hi, my name is Zach. I am the public relations officer for the Young Greens of Ohio. And I think there are some technical difficulties because our host has left. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Sorry about that. My app has crashed. My app, my app has cra crashed. Sorry about that, everybody. It's fine. But we are back. But we're back. Anyway. Um, sorry. Uh, Zach, can you introduce yourself? Uh, I already did, but I'll do it again. I am the public relations officer for the Young Greens of Ohio. Thank you. Mark, Marco, can you introduce yourself? Yeah, um, my name's Marco. Um, I'm the co-chair for the Young Greens of Ohio. I want to welcome both of them for tuning in today and joining us. Today, our topic for our live stream discussion is why socialism. Socialism has been an ever-increasing topic on the American psyche these days. And especially in the Green Party of the United States, we have officially declared ourselves an eco-socialist political, political party since 2016. Now that has met with some controversy as to a lot of people don't know, still don't know what socialism is. And today we're going to attempt to explain that here and why we are a socialist party. Marco, let's begin. What is socialism? Um, socialism by definition is where workers seize the means of production of the workplace. So that's democra uh, democratization of the workplace. They could vote what goes on in their workplace, more organization, so they could vote on their bosses and have control of resources of when they work and how it operates. Thank you. Zach, what is socialism? Um, by textbook definition, it's a political and economic theory of social organization, which advocates that the means of production, distribution, and exchange should be owned or regulated by the community as a whole. But adding into that, making an effort to kill off corporate domination, the idea of laissez-faire capitalism is destroying people's lives and the environment as well by free reign markets and capitalism. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So, a lot of people debate whether the Green Party is a socialist party. Let's clear up some confusion right now. Is the Green Party a socialist party? And what is the position of socialism in the Greens? Marco? Um, I'd agree whether it's not like goes off the full basics of Mar uh, Marxism. I'd probably say there's some revisionists in it as it is trying to advocate for reform, not revolution. So, but it advocates for certain policies of socialism, I guess, of people getting there is more collect worker uh, collectivism. So more unions and workers having more control of their workplace and ending corporate greed for the environment. Yeah. Zach, is the Green Party a socialist party? And what is the position of socialism in the Greens? Um, the Green Party is an eco-socialist party, combining elements of ecology and socialism. Um, I think that many people mistake socialism as the government controlling production or that the government tells the, par tells the people what to do. But the Green Party socialist ideas are by the people, of the people, and for the people, kind of like a type of libertarian socialism leaning away from USSR socialism. Yes, the Green Party originally got our start into op in the 1980s in Europe as an opposition force, a third alternative away from Soviet style communism, as well as Western neoliberal capitalism. Um, mm -hmm. And we bring that ideology into eco-socialism um, where we always say, you don't have to be a socialist, an outright red banner carrying socialist to join the mm -hmm. Green Party. You just have to be open and accepting and willing to work with people who are of those ideologies because greens come in many different shades, many different flavors. How would getting to socialism, how would achieving socialism electorally through the greens, how would that help 
the climate. Zach. Um, um, well, Austin, the first is public ownership. And I'm going to quote John Malinu. Um, he said, not the elimination of personal private property or the nationalization of every small business and corner shop, but of the main banks, corporations, industry, services, and utilities. For example, public ownership of bus and transportation networks, of the health service, um, of one main state bank and one main state insurance company, of social housing, of waste management, of water, electricity, gas, wind, and solar production. And then the second is democratic control of production and society. Quoting John Molina once again, um, each major workforce, each hospital, factory, train station, school, university, etc., should be run by the elected and recalibrable representatives of its workforce within the context of a democratic plan for the economy and society as a whole. That would need to be proposed by government based on an accountable to democratically elected popular assemblies. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Marco, how would achieving socialism help the climate? Um, how achieving social climate? Well, first off, you'd have nationalization of key resources, especially the energy resources. So nationalization will allow the people to have a say on what goes on in the energy climate so we could vote on and have control of whether how much oil we produce and we're moving towards cleaner things like wind and solar or whether people want to choose between nuclear or those options you know nuclear is still bad for the environment it's still better than oil i would say we should move towards the solar and wind yeah sorry if you my cat is currently snoring on my lap sorry to everyone viewing the live stream if you can hear her um but yes where, uh, wherever there's an incentive for profit there's an incentive for exploitation that's the whole precipice the whole mantra of capitalism and that happens in people and the environment both if somebody pays a worker hundred dollars to go chop down the last tree in the forest, the worker who needs to keep his house warm, his family clothed and fed, will go down and chop the last tree in the forest. However, if the worker's basic needs are taken care of through a socialist planned eco economic system, he has the ability to say no and to reject the lesser evil in chopping down the last tree in the forest and the option to protect the more inclined to protect the environment. He or she, that worker. How does capitalism oppress the working class in the United States? And how would a socialist Green Party free them from these chains? Marco? Well, in our capitalist system, the worker does not get the sweat of their brow. Um, the capitalists take the fruits of their labor. People have to work paycheck to paycheck and they're not guaranteed housing, food, or just education. Capitalism takes that away from them. Moving to a socialist economy and way of life, we workers will guarantee the sweat of their brow by having a house, not living in poverty, getting education, and just the basic needs met. Thank you so much. Zach. Um, as I previously stated, uh, laissez-faire capitalism, which we currently live under, gives free reign to big corporations and companies to do what they please, especially when um, the company and corporation has a lack of union um, to treat workers however they see fit. Countless big companies and corporations have failed the people time and time again, and the environment as well. Um, socialism frees the worker by the community having the last word the means of production seized by the people to be put into better interests for the people. Mm. Yes, and these big corporate, cor these big corporations also have the lobbying power to overturn environmental laws passed by Congress. They also have the political and economic power to bully small community governments, city councils, mayor offices into allowing them to be able to dump harmful chemicals in the Cuyahoga River, for example. They have the political and economic power to bully their way into these small little communities and poison the water system, poison the underground wells and wreak environmental disaster on local small communities that mainly affect black and brown and urban communities in the state of Ohio. Mm -hmm. Whereas the people don't have that power. A big question people ask 
is, is socialism achievable through reform and electoral work? Zach, is socialism achievable through electoralism? Um, yes, I think the Greens can put a lot of laws into action regarding the economy, lots of legislation geared, geared towards giving the power back to the people, which is really what socialism or eco socialism is all about. Yeah. Marco, is socialism achievable electorally? Um, I'd say no. Uh, living in a capitalist system, you can, may, you can may elect a, a leader who is good and willed, but the system will not let them get more power. You see this now where, let's say like democratic politicians just say they are socialists. They have been affected by the capital's way of life like AOC, she's voted down things of the workers like the railroad workers. She's been affected by greed and power. So all these workers are now suffering while the government just forced a bad contract on them. And so the capitalists will not let you hold any profit. There has to be some governmental force or violence on these companies to get them and take control for the help the workers. Even nationally here in the United States, our most left-wing socialist members of Congress are still voting to fund immigration protection and enforcement agencies, still voting to fund the US military war games, still voting for crippling economic sanctions on North Korea to the point where you can't even import baby formula into the country, voting for, against railway worker strikes. Yet they have the audacity to sit there and say, I'm a socialist, I'm a member of DSA, I care about the working class people whatever. With the majority of Americans viewing socialism negatively and the majority of young people voting, voting socialism positively, why are so many people still voting for the Democratic Party? The Democratic Party is a capitalist party. However, we have so many in and about socialists still stuck in the two-party system. How can we possibly break that trap? Marco? Um, the, well, this happens because the system won't let third parties get involved. They strike, strike us down off the ballot. But if we want to do that, we'd have to advocate and get to a system where they allow third party system, third parties to be able to be elected to nationally. It's hard for people like, like us to get to the national. Mm. It's, we barely get a percentage of the vote or it's, like I said before, we kicked off the ballot. So if we want to get that, we have to advocate for third party systems and laws in place to protect third parties. Zach, with the majority of young Americans viewing socialism positively, um, yet a lot of these self-described socialists are still rooting, working for a capitalist party of an empire and war, the Democratic mm -hmm. Party. How can we as Greens change that? Um, I do think socialism can be reached in America because we do have a whole new generation of voters coming to light, a whole new group of people who do have socialist ideas. Um, these fairly new voters have seen the heart of destruction that capitalism brings through many injustices. Um, I know a lot of people who do have socialist ideas and I do think that one day we will see a socialist USA. It just all depends on who's going to be that party and organization because we do have national socialists, not national socialists, sorry. We, <laughs> <laughs> we do have socialist organizations nationally, such as the DSA. However, they still cannot bring themselves to break their pact, electoral pact with the Democratic Party. And that mm -hmm. only seems to hurt socialists who are elected um, through the DSA and through the Democratic leadership because they are unwilling to break that hold that the Democratic Heart Party holds on socialist politicians. Before we end the live stream, I wanted to chat with our two guests, Zach and Marco, about their socialist leaders and their teachers that they admire the most. Marco, who is a socialist leader or teacher that you admire the most? Teacher? Uh, I'm gonna go like basic, like basic with this one. Um, I was always as a kid, I was always a big, big Lenin guy as a kid. So I'm pretty sure it was like the very first books I've read. So he holds a dear place in my heart on where I've, have, where I've grown as a kid and where I'm now. So I got thank his readings and his education on other people.
and how it influenced the world. Zach, who is your most influential socialist leader, politician, or thinker? Um, honestly, I would have to say either Che Guevara or um, Fidel Castro, because I do think that both of them did have good leaders and the Communist Party of Cuba could have been stronger um, had the United States not have been involved so much. But um, yeah, I do. I don't know. Their teachings are, are very good and they did good for their people. A lot of anti-communists often bring up the fact that during and after the Cuban revolution, um, LGBT people in Cuba were persecuted. Mm -hmm. um, however, while that is absolutely unacceptable and right. the, the L um, LGBT people deserve a right to live a happy and healthy life free from exactly. all discriminations, this was 1950, mm -hmm. 1960. There was mm -hmm. no country on the planet that was open and accepting to LGBT people in the 1950s and the 1960s. Right. Fidel Castro, before his death, apologized for his treatment of LGBT people mm -hmm. and gave reparations to those who were unjustly persecuted after the Cuban revolution. And his niece, his brother's daughter, Mariela Castro, is now one of the biggest LGBT activists in the Americas. And mm -hmm. recently, Cuba, by national plebiscite, national vote, legalized same-sex marriage. One mm -hmm. of the very few countries in the world to legalize same-sex marriage through a national referendum. Mm -hmm. um, still was, under Communist Party rule. Still so, under Communist Party rule, under so. decades of a US blockade. Mm -hmm. And a large, I think it was about like what, 66, 33? So two and three Cubans agreeing to the legalization of same-sex marriage and having some right. of the most progressive family laws in the world, mm -hmm. might I add you. So Cuba has been a strong beacon for a lot of left-wing movements in the world, um, yeah. sending doctors around the world, not bombs. But yeah, I wanna thank you all for tuning in today. Um, and joining our Ohio Green Party youth live stream. And we want to wish you a happy, safe, and healthy holidays this year. And we will see you in 2023. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.